to discuss the Philippines' potential as a location for startups is co-founder and chief operating officer Aldo Carascoso of Align Commerce. Good to have you with us, Aldo. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Kathy. So this Silicon Valley startup helps the small guy here, pretty much the importers, the OFWs, and the small businesses make their payments cheaper without those huge international transfer fees. That's correct. Actually, when we started the company late 2013, early 2014, it was never about ideology. Um, it's always about uh, supporting the uh, small guy, always. Yeah, but it's, it also supports the blockchain technology in which Bitcoin had been involved as the first app, and Bitcoin didn't really have such good press over the past two years because uh, the biggest exchange for Bitcoins went under. So how do you change people's minds that the system that you're using is so much better than going through the SWIFT codes? Right, so um, Bitcoin actually started uh, in 2009, and you know, I started with uh, the Bitcoin currency much, much earlier. So uh, what's interesting about that is Bitcoin and the blockchain, they were both, they were happening at the same time. But 99.9% .9 of attention was on the currency because it was value, everyone was making money, it was free, you could mine it. But uh, you know, when my co-founder and I, when we started with the blockchain, we were very curious about how this whole digital uh, currency could transfer funds, make settlements local and those things. So we, uh, you know, we invested a lot of our time, ignored Bitcoin completely and went over this whole decentralized ledger uh, technology called the blockchain. And what that did was, wow, it opened up a, a brand new way of settling, a brand new way of paying. So um, just to be clear, Align Commerce is not a Bitcoin company. We are actually, a, you know, we're, if not the first blockchain payment processor in the world. And indeed, and you don't have to go through those SWIFT codes that hackers could actually uh, get into and crack. I, I, I would like to uh, 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 comment on what happened to SWIFT, but uh, there's no need to understand uh, SWIFT messaging or anything. So we still connect bank to bank. So Align Commerce is actually a uh, replacement for wire and telegraphic transfers. Uh, the main thing we do is we connect one bank to another bank directly by removing all the correspondent banks in the middle. And so. it's interesting that your core development team had actually come from the Philippines. That's South Seda Village in Makati, That's Filipino true. engineers. That's true. Being the very first, uh, what do you call that? It's the, the blockchain yes. uh, payment engineers in the world. That's true. So how so did that happen? Around three years ago, uh, I, you know, I found that uh, we needed to find this new technology uh, we needed the expertise. So I went with a bunch of uh, engineers here and I told them there's, there's this new thing that I, uh, that I found and I explained to them how to use it. None of them had heard of it. None of them had had any experience in it. So I spent maybe a good one and a half years developing. So coming back from Silicon Valley, going to, to, to Makati, doing two, two to three weeks uh, sprints over 80 hours a week. And you know, we built some of the first actually, if not the first uh, 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 payments processing system on the blockchain. So, so now you're, you're split between San Francisco, Silicon Valley, and uh, Metro Manila. Uh, given the, uh, the huge uh, startup hyper growth that you're seeing here in the Philippines, yes. how many more Filipino engineers are you hoping to hire from so, here? So we're looking at expanding uh, tremendously. One of the most important things I think uh, we need to focus on is not just the talent, but the understanding of the domain. So. Um, Blockchain engineering isn't exactly well understood. In fact, if you're a blockchain engineer right now, you can get a job with almost any bank or with almost any of the large accounting firms because a tremendous amount of investments have gone into just, you know, you're hearing every single day now. It used to be every single month, and then every single week, every single day, you've got Deloitte announcing this new initiative with blockchain and you're seeing all of these big banks. And I remember the time when we started. Um, Kathy, it was a surreal time. Because uh, you know we were the only guys talking about blockchain when everyone was so hype with Bitcoin. It was when the first indictments happened, money laundering over Bitcoin. Exactly. So, it so, was, so yes, it was kind of like you know uh, run over by these events. But then now you're looking at the Philippines as a location for all these tech startups. Right. Why the Philippines when we've got all these internet issues? Oh, we've got a tremendous amount of talent here. So one of the things that I you know um, we've had the privilege of uh, landing the world's largest VCs like Kleiner Perkins. Essentially, the same, uh, you know, the same uh, VC that uh, backed, uh, you know, uh, Google, Amazon, Twitter, right? Um, and what I wanted to do really is, you know, I find that Filipino engineers are underutilized. They are probably not mentored correctly. There is a there is a way to uh, use a Silicon Valley type assembly line, as I uh, say, and basically 
assign that and allow you to basically use that same process for a Philippine type of operation. But of course, you have to localize it. I've seen and a lot. And you've got to get government help. I mean, they started a roadmap for tech startups right. about a year and two months ago. That's correct. I mean, did that help at, in, any, in any case? I think, you know, when talking to universities, which are, of course, the number one uh, manufacturing <laughs> uh, production lines for engineers, they have a lot more push when it comes to coming up with software and hardware engineers. So you're getting more people, but now I think uh, there needs to be an upgrade with the curriculum, you know, uh, less, less of the old school type of uh, languages or platforms, more of the new school type of uh, um, uh, programming and software languages. But you got to get people on the internet. I mean, there's a huge population still out there in the Philippines, not connected online. That's correct. So how do we go around that? So I mean, I think the, the issue is not just of the internet. The issue is uh, infrastructure wise. So you've got par uh, traffic. Of course, that's one of the main internet traffic or road traffic. Just road traffic. <laughs> I mean, if you're if you're looking at some of our engineers, they spend two to three hours a day just on the road. Um, internet. I mean, we have great internet uh, whenever they work. But of course, if you want to expand that and be competitive globally, you have to make sure that you're able to afford everyone the ability to access the internet quickly. Exactly, but even even if we don't just talk about the world, everything is happening here in the ASEAN, the tech ecosystems that in the correct. ASEAN, like in Singapore, in Thailand, Vietnam, they're all growing. That's right. So how do we compete against them? So I think we need to leverage um, our innate talent. Um, we've got, I think one of the big advantages of being a Filipino engineer is your ability to communicate. So one of the things I found that are very different from working with engineers in over a dozen um, countries, we're the best at communicating. And we actually, um, we inject the flavor of creativity. So a lot of engineers have worked uh, in and around the world are very rote. They're very to the, you know, to the dot, to the point, to the very uh, thing. Um, it's very hard to have an innovation session with them, but with Filipino engineers, uh, what I like about it is they, they have, they're creative. You give them a problem, they don't just ask you what to do with a the problem. They actually provide real actionable solutions. And I find that consistent with engineers that I work with here. So are you in a hiring spree this year or next year? Uh, we're always in a hiring spree. I mean, as you know, we're hiring uh, in all the locations that uh, we have. We've Which locations are these? So uh, our, we have two offices in San Francisco and one in Silicon Valley. Uh, we're also hiring in our Canada office and our Manila office. Oh, that sounds like a really huge uh, expansion there. So how are customer volumes looking as well as transaction numbers? Well, that's not really public information, but we have over uh, many, many, many thousands of happy uh, customers. Actually, we in fact have, um, I think, over a thousand Philippine customers right now. That they're, all, they're all businesses, so we don't do any remittances, you know, like what Western Union or, or Palawan would do. So, yeah, it's over a thousand of these small and medium enterprises. And you mentioned banks interested also in this kind of technology. I mean, have they approached you for, for such kind of business? Oh, yeah. I mean, every single day, Kathy, there is a bank, again, announcing that they're doing an initiative with a blockchain startup. And, and they uh, want to partner with you? They want to rival or buy you? Uh, in fact, uh, one of our main investors is Silicon Valley Bank. So um, it's the, uh, the banks, uh, you know, um, the reason why they're extremely interested with the blockchain right now is I'm going to borrow this from one of our um, investors, Adam Draper. He said the banks are so interested with, with this whole blockchain uh, technology because they don't want to be Napstered. So you know what Napster did mm. to, to all the, you know, uh, Sony, BMG, and all of those guys? Banks are very, very, um, they don't want to be uh, hit from left field. So they actually have either investments in a working group, investments in an incubator, or actually doing gigantic projects over the blockchain. And you've got, you know, you've got uh, uh, Barclays announcing something a couple months ago. You've got uh, Deutsche Bank. You even have the big, you know, uh, the big four insurance companies, um, big four consulting firms, Accenture, everyone. It's like, it's, it's, it's the best time to be in the blockchain right now. Okay, well, thank you so much for that update, and good luck to all the prospects that you have here in the Philippines for tech startups. Thank you. Aldo thank you very Carascoso much for of Align Commerce joining us here in the studio.